What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Surf Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Here's another episode of Horror Research Dirty. I got my guest Dave with me. Dave, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. How's yourself? I'm doing pretty good. And real quick, because I'm terrible with these things. Like I'm horrible with accents. I'm horrible with guessing. So where are you? Where are you from? Um, I'm from um, a place called Middlesbrough in the UK. Oh, nice. Although, although I live in Newcastle, up near Newcastle. Now you've probably heard of Newcastle. I think so, probably. I'm sure I have Newcastle. A great, a great footballing place if you're into football. But... Okay, but okay. See, that's. The difference here is because for here it's soccer, but yeah. I get what you mean, though. Of course, of course. I know what you mean. Now, real quick, before I even get into this, how is like the lockdown stuff, the quarantine, and all that going for you guys with this whole COVID nineteen? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you don't really know what's going on with it all, do you? To be honest, I mean, obviously you you read what you see online and mm -hmm. on the news and in the news in the papers newspapers and it's difficult isn't it it's a difficult situation for a lot of people um, yeah I mean to to be honest I'm I'm coping with it quite well um, and where I live you know there seems to be quite a lot of people still wandering about so I don't think it's affected too many as, as bad as what people are saying but, mm. but yeah yeah it's it's like everyone, I think we're all just looking forward to getting some some positivity and and you know getting back out there and, and being able to do stuff because I think it's just the 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 uncertainty is is what's worse of not knowing what's going to happen in the future. I suppose is worse a lot of the time, but yeah, yeah. But as I'm suppose it's the same over over in the US there. Yeah. Yep. I'm up in upstate New York, and it's pretty much yeah, pretty much the same. I know parts of the US are opening up. But um, New York's probably going to be like one of the last states, I feel. Yeah. And, I mean, there's really not much you can do. But I, I always tell people, like, now's the time to, if you have those house, pro those home projects, if you're someone who's, you know, they're making you stay home because you, and you're, and you're deemed non-essential as far as going to work. Mm -hmm. Now's a great time to work on those projects. Now's a great time to perfect your crafts and all that other good stuff. And to you right, know, to right. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things you can do, you know. So oh, yeah. Certainly, if you're a writer, you know. Um, oh yeah, writers, podcasters. If you even if you make movies, there, there's something you you can do something. If you're a director, actor, actress, there's some way you can do something to perfect what you do or your hobbies, your crafts, whatever. Maybe if you're someone who works, say you work a regular nine to five, and you want to, you don't want to work for anyone anymore. Maybe now's the time to kind of think of a way to think of a business. Think of a business idea that can run through this type of pandemic, like one of those type of businesses that's not shut down right now. This is also mm -hmm. a great time to be thinking of that and processing mm -hmm. those ideas out there. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, well, you know, these type of places are still open during this kind of thing. They're not getting shut down. So that's the kind of business I should want to go for. If, if there's someone who wants to be a business owner. Of course, of course. Yeah, I mean, 
as you say, there's always something you can be doing, you know, oh, yeah. in isolation. So that's I think you do we all just have to stay positive. Yeah. I mean that's very all true. you can do, isn't it, really? You know? It's, very, uh, very true. We're all in the same boat, all globally on a global level. So I think we all have to just stay positive and get through this and hopefully come out the other side, you know, intact as much it, as we yeah. can. I agree. And that that's the crazy thing because I've talked to, okay, so I talked to you now. You're in the UK. I talked to, um, what is his name? His, his show's called Dover Reviews. He's in Australia. And it's pretty much like, it's, it's crazy how it's just the same around the world. Like everybody's literally just, for the most part, is on lockdown at home or just going from home to work. You might go out to get stuff you need for your house or, you know, other, other than that, you're pretty much home around your house maybe going for a walk but it's just yeah it's it's crazy because it's affecting everybody i think it's i don't want to say cool as like a good cool but like cool in the sense of where again everybody's pretty much doing the same thing i don't mean and i don't want to say cool as far as like the people getting sick and dying and all i don't want to put that into it but i'm just saying as far as the aspect of us being at home and just kind of because usually when you see something crazy going on it's like for example, like a wildfire or some sort of crazy disaster. It's in like one area of the world, mm. but this is really affecting all of us. Mm. Mm. So it's, it's I, suppose, I suppose in a funny way, it kind of unites us all on a global level. That would be beautiful. That would be amazing. Hopefully after this is all over, you know, the world, the world will learn to be a better place. I hope so. You know, certainly before it, there was so much shit going on with, yes. with everything. And, Yes. Fingers crossed. We get, we can only hope as as, as one race to, that it's going to unite us in some in some positive way. Yep. So we can come out as come out as better people on the other end. Let's let's hope for that. Definitely. Definitely. But um, getting into the fun stuff now. <laughs> what got you like? <coughs> excuse me. What got you into horror movies? As far as being a fan of them, like, and then what was that first movie that you remember that scared you as a child? <laughs> There was a number. There wasn't any one particular movie, I wouldn't say, but obviously, like a lot of, um, you know, horror fans, I kind of grew up on the old kind of Hammer horror, Tygon horror, mm -hmm. um, all the late night Saturday, uh, late Saturday night horror films, which which I shouldn't have been watching at that age, but you kind of do, don't you? As, as oh yeah. Youngsters. And you know they they were just fascinating at the time, I think. So, like, a, I would imagine like a lot of filmmakers, you know, I think that was the kind of the basis of the start of my of my love for horror films, particularly. But I think as I grew older, you know, I, I think I've always tended to be the type of person who kind of tries to look behind, be underneath and behind things. Yeah. Um, so I think it was that it was that kind of attraction to to kind of the darker side, I suppose, which which kind of cemented the love for horror, really, in the end. Yeah, it's it's to me, it's just such a crazy, fun genre because it it can literally go in like any direction and not be wrong. Yeah, and it's just entertaining. And as like as I'm getting older, you know, now I'm an adult. I'm starting to look at it as more of not just, you know, for the blood, guts and gore and boobs and all that stuff, but just the art form of it. Like, cause it's just, it's a different art form than any other genre of movies because you have to, as far as like, say for a slasher film, you got to tear somebody apart. You have to be the killer or the victim and you just have to really sell it on screen and really like make it look good to, you know, so the horror fans will want to come see it. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, you know what I mean? Versus like an action film, you have a couple explosions and something else and people, yeah, that's that's a cool movie. That's a fun movie. But with horror, I feel like you have to take it to that next level. You like really, really have to put more into it than just a, a cool explosion because that's not going to sell it for us at all, as you know and as I know. Of course, and, of course. Yeah, it's, it's again, it's just a fun, it's a fun thing. It's a real yeah. fun genre. <clears throat> and it's crazy that it, it unites so many freaking people around the world. And this it is does. a perfect example right here. Yeah, it does. I mean, it, 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 it's a wonderful genre, really, because as you, you know, not to go back over old ground what you were saying, but there's no there's no wrong. You know, you can pretty much do whatever you want and kind of get away with it, mm -hmm. in, it in a good way, you know. Um, 
and I think film in general is, for me, for myself, it's all about experience and, and you know, kind of trying to push boundaries and, and not necessarily in the blood and guts way all the time. I mean, I think I, I think I prefer films which, which you know, have kind of a subtext underneath, um, and and they kind of make you think think more than just the kind of visceral horror of, yeah. of of blood and guts. You know, something which is deeper, which is darker, and underneath. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and also what's probably in us all as human beings, them kind of fears, deep deep dark fears, mm-hmm. which we all have. You know, but not necessarily aware of often. You know, the, them kind of films for me are, are more successful in within the horror genre. Um, it's, I mean, the, I suppose the nearest maybe filmmakers I, I could kind of think of to use as examples is is kind of maybe Cronenberg and Lynch and um, some. Some some of the more experimental filmmakers, I suppose, who kind of try to do things differently. You know, not not necessarily so visual, but kind of add elements within the films, which kind of yeah. hit you on a different level. I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. <clears throat> so, what got you? Is this horror? Like when you, <clears throat> excuse me, when you started doing movies. Is that, I mean, was that, no, a better question is, is that something you always wanted to do? Like ever since your childhood, like you wanted to make movies or was it something that came on like later on in life? Yeah, it was probably something that came on later on in life. And to be honest, it, you know, if I look back, if I look back to when I was young, it was probably more of a, a confidence thing than anything else. You know, I never even thought when I was younger that it was something I, I could do because I kind of come from a working class background in England. And um, my education was never really kind of pushed, you know. Um, yeah. In fact, when I was younger, I, I used to do. I was an, I was an, uh, an uh, amateur boxer. I did. Oh wow! I did, I did that for ten years because my dad's a, um, a boxing trainer. who just recently retired, actually. Um, so schoolwork and education wasn't particularly a priority um, because I was heavily involved in sport. So I kind of never gained a lot of confidence in terms of, of, of looking towards careers and what I would like to do as a, as a youngster. So I kind of just drifted through various jobs mm. as I was growing up. And it was kind of probably in my late, mid to late 20s when I was kind of pissed off thinking, well, you know, is this my life? Kind of just working in dead end jobs, which I, I didn't particularly enjoy. Um, or is there something that out there I can do? And I kind of looked at what it was I enjoyed doing, and it was, you know, I loved music, massive fan of mu- music, and and also film as well. So it was it was kind of brought on from there, really, where when I started getting involved in mm. the uh, in film. <clears throat> no, that's cool though. That's cool. If you never, you, it, I like asking that question because I get different answers from every single person that does movies, like some say, yeah, they started, you know, they wanted to as a kid. Some even started as a kid as far as doing, you know, little simple VHS videos with their toys and stuff. Yeah. And then others, it was just like into adulthood, like, hey, I want to try something new or it comes at all different variations. I think it's just a cool thing because it, it all, it brings us all to, you know, horror films or, or films in general, filmmaking in general. And I feel with horror, I think another awesome thing about it is with the independent scene, I, me personally, I'm not saying that there's none out there, but I haven't seen any other genre that does indie, not only does indie films, but does indie films as successful as, as horror, the horror genre goes. Cause you see, like you see it, all, I see it all the time on the internet as far as like, you know, here's a new indie film coming out today of a horror film, whether it be like the, you know, the fan made ones like a Friday the 13th or an original idea. But either way, it's, it, I think that's an awesome thing how people can do it literally from their own freaking, you know, their own little devices like a cell phone. Just mm-hmm. start out like that and make a little film. And that's why, I, that's why in the beginning I was saying this is a great time for people to perfect their craft. If someone wants to start making films, you don't have the money. You don't have, hey, if you have a cell phone that has a camera on it, go right ahead. 
you know, if you have a house, you know, you got a household, a couple, you know, some family that lives with you, hey, do little things with your family. Just get, just get practice out there just to get some things going. And we've been in this lockdown for a couple of months now. So, hey, that's a lot of time, and a lot of practice for whatever craft you're in. And I just think it's an, again, I think it's an awesome thing how just about any, anybody can really do it. You just have to have the idea and the passion for it. And I mean, at the very least, you can put your movie out on YouTube, which is a, actually a great thing. Get a lot of views on YouTube and possibly you know, make Blu-rays or DVDs if you get enough, you know, feedback and fan. Of course. Go from there. Of course. <clears throat> yeah, and I, also I think it, it's kind of on a on a kind of more personal level. It's not necessarily always about the final product, you know. It's about the kind of the process and the development of what you as a person mm -hmm. or as a filmmaker actually get from that process of, of doing any art, not necessarily just film. Well, film's a good example because that's what we're, we're involved in. But, you know, personally for me, it's something which kind of feeds my soul, my soul as an artist. And, and I'm sure a lot of people, filmmakers especially, can, mm -hmm. you know, do it for that reason. I mean, obviously, you know, there's a very, very small percentage of people who actually earn a living out of doing what we do. Um, so what's, I think you have to ask yourselves, why do we keep doing it then? <clears throat> And it's simply because it's something in there which kind of feeds your soul and, and feeds the, you know, the, the artistic elements within you, which we as human beings need to, to kind of let out <coughs> yeah. ourselves, you know. Um, and, and I think especially the horror gen genre is great for that, you know. Um, as I say, it, it kind of comes back to there not being particularly as many rules to follow, you know. Mm -hmm pretty much get away with with anything which is which is cool you know which is cool you know it enables people of all different levels to be able to make make something and and i think that's important as people as a you know a process of, of developing growing as as human beings you know it's important for us to to produce in in some way especially if it's something from within within us from inside and and it, it, it's for me, that that's the most important part about yeah, um, not just filmmaking but any art, I suppose. I agree, I agree, and I can say that just from like with podcast and how you were saying how, why do we do? I mean, as far as filmmakers, podcasting, any type of craft, why do you do it knowing you're not going to make money off of it? And it's that passion, it's that thing that's just like. <clears throat> It feels good. Like it feels good inside. It feels. It's one of those things, and, and and you enjoy doing it. It's not like you're just getting up. Like it's this is my. You know what I mean? Like this is my job. I have to do it because you really don't have to do it. Like I make. I don't make money off of doing this, but I love doing it. I love meeting new people. Love meeting the new horror fans. Love talking about horror and just in general. And it opens the thing with this too. With this podcast is it opens my eyes to more horror movies because again, like I said, I do movie reviews with either my co-hosts or random fans and they'll, Hey, they'll, like I'll, I'll say if me and you were re reviewing a movie, I'd have you send me a movie like, or tell me a movie you want to review. I'll go out, look for it, find the movie, watch the movie and then review it. And if it's a, I like it more. I like it when it's a movie I've never heard of, I've never seen before. Cause it just broadens my horizon to the, you know, me growing up, my main films was like slasher films, you know, the Nightmare on Elm Street, the Friday the 13th, the Halloween's, Chucky's, all that kind of stuff, because that's just what was easily accessible. It was shown most on TV, those kind of films. And I just got used to watching those all the time. And, you know, here and there, I'd branch off into some newer things here and there. But now I'm just like 100% like open to watching any and every horror movie I can get my hands on, because again, I just want to be able to discuss them with other fans on this podcast and i'm not one of those fans who pretends i know everything about horror because i don't know even i don't know that much of it <laughs> i know about that much of it like the rest yeah. of us I, I think it's impossible for anyone yeah. to, know, to know everything about horror because it's so widespread isn't it you know? it really it really is and like i like how again i like how i can go back and watch like say there's 80s horror movies i've never seen in my life i can go back and watch those now and i'm just like wow and appreciate them because I grew up in the genre of when they came in. Mean, I'm 34. I was born in 85. So I grew up in that genre kind of when these movies were coming out or, you know, a little after when they were coming out, so to speak. Yeah. But I, I watched those movies as a kid. So I respect, so I can always go back and watch those now, even the ones I haven't seen because I respect how they looked back then. 
and then I can still watch, you know, watch these ones now and enjoy them now without having to be like, oh, well, you know, well, this one in the 80s looks real super. I love the cheesiness of horror. I love the super cheese of the 80s horror, the 80s. It's, yeah. it's just, you know what it is? Because it's so fun. And like, if you, I guess if you really think about it, if you really pay attention to it, like with the 80s horror, the 80s action movies, the eight, you know, those type of things. Yeah. They're similar in a sense of like, say, the music, the style of clothing, the way they, you know, the certain things are just similar so it's like you could watch these you could watch these movies like oh this this is cool but with horror it brings that extra cheesiness to it It brings that more intensity of course and it's just it's one of those things i never get sick of i i I don't think i would ever get tired of watching a horror movie like i think i'm not gonna say every single horror movie but for the most part i feel like most of the horror movies i've seen are rewatchable i can't say the same for every single genre like i'll say for example there's comedy movies there's only a handful of comedy movies, maybe a little more than a handful of comedy movies I can watch over and over again and still laugh and still enjoy them. But for the most part, I'll give you a great example, like romantic comedies, that's like a one or two time watch and that, and you're over it. And to me, they're all the same. No, here's how, like, here's, and you could say the same about certain horror movies, but you still enjoy watching them. But here's a romantic comedy real quick. Beginning of the movie, it's either, you know, the guy and the girl couple, they're either a couple at the time or one person's out of the other person's league because, you know, finances, one person's really rich, the other person's not. They start talking, they become friends. Nine times out of ten, the guy does something stupid, he tries to get the girl back. They get married at the end of the movie. There's a wedding. There's a dance. Every single <laughs> romantic comedy, they end in a wedding and then dancing. Every single one. And yeah. it's just, you know You're what I mean? Right. Like, with those, you can only watch them once or twice. Versus like a horror movie, I can watch those a thousand times. Like say Friday, I'll just throw Friday the 13th out there because it's my favorite slasher franchise. I can watch those movies a thousand times. You know exactly what they're going to say, what they're going to do, how it's going to end. But yeah, every yeah. single time you watch it, you're just, you just enjoy it. Like I can even put those on for background noise, which I've done plenty of times. You say if you're doing something around the house and you can just walk in the room like, okay, well, I want to see this kill real quick. So let me go in the room right now because I know it's about to happen within the next three seconds. And, you know, for someone who hasn't seen the movie before or someone who might have seen it a couple, how do you know? Like, look, I've seen, I've, I grew up with this. I know this movie like the back of my hand. Yeah. And I, it's just, I don't, I, I feel like it brings something, it brings something out of you with horror too. Like I've been to a play. I don't know if you guys have a lot of horror conventions out there, but we do around here and like just meeting new horror fans. I feel like it's the, the nicest community. It's so accepting. Everybody, you know, everybody's so nice. Nobody cares about your race sexual orientation, rel- nothing. Every, like Once you walk in the door of a horror convention or once you walk in a conversation of horror, everything else is like dropped. It's like we're all just, I don't want to say we all look the same, but it's like we all just kind of just, you don't focus on what the person looks like. You don't focus on what the person's into or nothing. It's just, hey, have you seen this movie? Hey, what do you think about this movie? Hey, you should check out this movie. And you kind of go into those kind of awesome conversations, which I love. I love. You're right. You're right. You know, it's a certain type of person and often nine times out of ten not maybe all the time but you know if you've got some um, something in common with with somebody who likes horror which is often the case you know there's always mm-hmm. one or two or a hundred films what yeah you know everybody knows and you know you can reference straight away you know and and it's this commonality i think which which brings the whole community the whole horror community together and it's fantastic yeah, often, you know, you you go and you meet nine times out of ten, you meet actors or you mm-hmm. know, filmmakers who are involved in the genre, and they're, and they're really nice people and really down to earth people. And again, that's another thing which which, which is kind of nice about the community as well. You know, there's no airs and graces, is there particularly? Um, I know certainly in the UK anyway. I mean, horrors kind of. Um, well, w- within the industry, it's 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 getting harder and harder now to get to get money through um, schemes mm-hmm. to make horror films. You know, certainly in the UK, it's um, there's a kind of a snobbery about specific types of, of films where money's concerned, um, which is not a good thing. But as you say, nine times. 
necessarily you don't you know you can go out and do them without having a, a big bucket load of money you know if you've just got yeah. a group of friends who who you know were interested in, in doing something and i think that's most of the time what what 99 percent of filmmakers do and it, like once again that comes back to to having a passion for horror and it's it's a fantastic thing and it, it, it's amazing what you can do with 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 little or nothing within the genre mm -hmm. you know, just talent and creativity fantastic i agree i agree and again with as far as recording with friends and all that stuff i i just i love it like i've watched so many different independent horror movies and you know the budget is you know you know the budget isn't huge which i still think it's cool because they you have to be i think the thing all right here it is what i love about horror films indie horror films is you have to be really creative as far as with the story, with something so that it really grabs, you know, grabs us fans' attention because we know, you're, you know, the budget's only so big. So it's like the budget's, say the budget's $10,000. <clears> you have to make that $10,000 work. Say the budget's only 500 bucks. You have to make that $500 work. Like wherever you're putting that money, you have to make that work. And then I've even talked to people who did like, <clears throat> they had their camera and they just got like a, say a $15 mask, a Halloween mask. And they did, they just did their movie from that in their own home, in their own yard. So they spent like 15, 20 bucks, which I respect that because it's like, you're not use you want to make a horror movie, right? You're not making an excuse of, oh, I've never done this before. I don't have the money. It's like, look, I want to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to just get a $15 mask, have me and my friend or me and whoever do this movie. And we're going to have fun with it, make a nice little short film mm. and put it out there and call it a day. Mm. And I just, <coughs> excuse me, I love that about this genre because, again, I don't feel like any other genre that I, I've never seen any other genre do it. And I don't feel any other genre can really be as successful as horror can because with horror, again, you can be, you, you can be fine with a really low budget horror movie and still get what you need to get from that movie and still get that enjoyment and that passion from that movie. I'm not saying you can't from other genres. I just have never seen it myself personally I, and I see independent horror movies coming out all the time or you know getting ready to come out or a new idea coming out and in Indiegogo and all that other stuff I don't see it for any other genre except for horror mm -hmm. no you're right you're right it's certainly um, you know it's certainly a good thing to be involved in um, and I suppose you know it's a, it's the kind of genre that that one shit once it's kind of got its hooks into you, it's kind of <laughs> difficult to pull you away. Know, from it. You either love it or you hate it, don't you? And if you love it, you're going to be with it forever. Oh, yeah. You know, I oh, mean, yeah. going back to like what you say, you know, I've got um, multiple amounts of filmmakers which whose films I can just watch over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not just purely because of enjoyment, although a lot of the time it is that, you know, I think there's a lot of filmmakers who work whose work you need to watch more than once anyway. And, you know, going back to the likes of, of uh, David Lynch and um, Cronenberg and, and even even the Italian filmmakers for me, Fulci and Argento and uh, um, Luigi Co Co uh, Cosi. And, you know, that you put their films on. And for me personally, anyway, I see something different every time I watch mm -hmm. their films, you know. Um, and it kind of, hits me on a, a deeper level somehow you know yeah yeah no, I, I get what you mean yeah it, it, it's it's a difficult one to explain but I suppose there's some kind of connection there on a mental level as well um, which it's, it's it's just fun it's just fantastic you know and it, it, it's certainly the best genre to be involved in hands down hands down hands down, without a doubt. And that's like, again, another thing with this podcast is like, okay, so I started it <clears throat> this January will be this j past January is two years. And like, at first I was just recording with people that I personally knew, like friends and family members. Mm -hmm. And it went from there to eventually reaching out to people on Facebook and just kind of going from there slowly, but surely working with more and more people here and there. When I go to like, um, I brought my podcast to the horror convention two times so I could, you know, and I have business cards now, so I'd hand out business cards and a couple of people would, you know, reach out and come on to record and all this cool stuff. So it's cool. And I never, like, where I'm at now, 
versus where I was two years ago with this, I never thought that I'd be recording with somebody from a different country. Never even crossed my mind, which I think is just an amazing thing. It is. Yeah. And like another thing I can say, I, I, I honestly thought when I first started this, I honestly thought it would just be like me, some family members and some friends. I never thought I'd even be able to talk to just other horror fans in general. But, you know, once once that happened, I'm like, OK, this is cool. But now talking to people from. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me thank you but yeah like i was saying friends and family to just you know people on facebook that are in my horror group and other horror groups to people around the world like people in other countries which i think is just an amazing thing and it's so cool again like i was saying earlier how it just it all comes down to us just being huge horror fans and that love of horror which i mean if you're if you're not the funny thing is like if you're not in the horror genre as far as like a fan of the horror genre you might look at some of us like these guys are like how the hell do they how do you guys like these crazy ass movies where you know you're trying to be scared all the time and like <clears throat> and it's it's just one of those things i guess it's just to me it's just entertainment it's beautiful art and as i was saying as far as how nice these, how nice everybody is in the genre for the most part i mean you do have your your jerks which is with everything but i feel I just feel like this genre is the most accepting. And my best example I can say is I'll say most accepting and like everybody who's really into it, who goes, I'll say everybody who goes to horror cons are really into those horror conventions versus like a comic comic con convention. And I say that I've been to both and I enjoy both, but with the comic cons, I feel, you know, it's either the boyfriend or the girlfriend or the kids that are into it. Not not always, but I'm saying a lot of times it's one. You know what I mean? It's you're going to support somebody else because it's their hobby, it's their passion. It's like, hey, I'm going with you because you like to do it. <laughs> Versus like a horror, <clears throat> excuse me, a horror convention. I feel, and I just feel like the energy is different. The energy is good in both places. But I feel like the energy is a little bit different. Like with a horror convention, I feel like everybody that's there wants to be there, from the kids to the adults. Which I know kids don't really have a choice, but I feel like they really do enjoy it from the kids to the adults, all the couples, everything, they really want to be there. It's like a different atmosphere, a different energy. Like when you walk in there, for me personally, it's like just like a kid walking into a candy store. You're just excited. You're you're just like, oh my goodness, this is so awesome. And I'm, <laughs> the funny thing is now is like when my wife goes with me, because it used to be me and my brother used to go. My wife would go here and there, but she goes all the time with us now or with me now. <clears throat> Every single time that we go now, I – like, we'll be you know, obviously we'll bring some money. I'll give her my money to hold because, again, I'm like a child and I'm just buy, 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 just buying stuff. And then I'm, I get mad because I can't buy something that I really, really wanted. So I'm like, here, hold the money, give it to me when I'm going to get my autographs because she knows what, like, I already know what autographs I want when I first go there. For the most part, sometimes I'll add more. So I'll get all my autographs first and then anything else I want to buy, I'll get that after. <clears throat> but I'll have her hold it because, again, I'm like a child. I'll just go there and spend, spend, spend. Like, I'll spend money. I'll spend damn near all my money in one day if I hold. If I, if it's up to me, you know. Well, it is up to me, but you know what I mean. Like if, if I'm holding my money, so I'm like, here, hold this. You know, I'll get my autographs today. Tomorrow, I'll look around and grab a couple things. The next day, I'll go around and grab a couple things. And but it, I I just can't help it. I just love it so much. Uh, and I can, I can I can identify with that. I mean, often films come before food with me as well. You know. It's funny you say because I'm I'm not lying to you, man. I'm the same exact way. Like I like say you know because we'll go away for the weekend, so I'll, we'll grab some stuff, you know, grocery shop, whatever for the for the room. Just like simple things you can heat up in the microwave, and I will I will sacrifice like say a ten dollar twelve dollar meal, and like okay, let me get this figure that costs forty five dollars. I know I need to save this extra twelve dollars for me to get something to eat. But we got something in the hotel. You know, I got that Easy Mac in the hotel, so I can just warm up and deal with that. I really want this figure. But what <clears throat> I think what it is, it's more of like, well, one, obviously, you're a, big, you're a huge fan of it. And then it's like certain things you'll find at the time that you won't find anywhere else. Or if you do find it somewhere else, like online, you might be paying triple the price. So it's like, why not get it for this decent price right here instead of going on eBay and paying triple the price? And I can buy it and have it right now. I don't have to wait. I think it's and it's just the experience too. Like it's cool to. I'm a big supporter of um, small businesses, and anytime I can do that, I'm a huge supporter of that. So like when I see somebody come that owns a store, their own person, you know, their own store, their own little shop, and they come, they have a figure, or they have a shirt, or whatever the case might be. I'd rather buy it from them than go buy it from say a Walmart, where I can get that same exact thing. But I'd rather buy it from you 
then go buy it from Walmart or whatever the case may be. And <clears throat> with independent horror movies, when people go to the, bring their movies to the cons, I try to, I try my best. This is again, if I just spend all my money, I try my best to buy at least one horror movie per con. That's like an indie movie, just because of the fact that like these people made it. I want to check it out. And I always try to get, I always buy one when I can. And I always get it signed just because I'm like, <clears throat> the funny thing is, is like the first time I did that, someone's like, you really want me to autograph this? I was like, yeah, you, ha you had something to do with this movie, right? Of course. Of course I want you to autograph it. Like if it's me, I can be an extra. Listen, <laughs> here's how I am. I could be an extra in a movie. If I have a table or I'm selling movies that I was in, every single movie is going to be signed before you even ask for it. <laughs> I don't even, that's just because I'm just, because I feel like it's just, not even to be cocky, it's just something to be proud of. It's just something to be really proud of. And, you know, sign your name on there. And if they want it personalized, cool. But I still, it's still signed. I can put two so and so. Here you go. And I just, it's just, I just feel like it's an awesome thing. And that's something that I just, it would be so cool to be like in, in a movie and then someone comes up to you and wants your autograph. That has to feel so cool, so great. I think it's also the support, supporting each other as well, which mm -hmm. is important, isn't it? You know? We're all in it, you know, we all love it, we all enjoy it, and I think it's important to show each other how much, and it doesn't matter that the film, what the film budget is, you know, the point is that people have put, you know, the time, the the heart, and and work, and, and the money often in, in, uh, into making this product, so the least we can do as, as supporters, whether you're a filmmaker or not, is try and support your fellow, you know, yeah. your fellow filmmakers or, or fans within the genre, you know. Mm -hmm. um, another good thing is also, you know, as a filmmaker, obviously, you know, going to festivals and what have you, you, you meet a lot of other filmmakers and I think it's, a, it's kind of important to take the time to kind of try to understand not only why they do what they do, mm -hmm. but also try, try to support what they do in whatever little way you can. You know, I mean, it's it's a hard thing, you know, at the end. And as much as it is easy to, to grab a phone, as, as what you were saying before, grab a phone or grab a camera and go and, go and make a film, yeah, that's, that, that's fantastic and a really good thing, you know, and certainly since the advent of technology, you know, and it, the availability of, of high-quality technology to be able to make films on a, at a cheap <coughs> level, mm -hmm. I think... You know, we're we're all striving to make our next film better than the previous one. You know, I think I think so. I suppose what I'm trying to say is, you know, everybody's trying to kind of strive to make a better. Oh film yeah. Next time, you know. Yeah. So I think it's important that we, as people, support support that art art history. You know. Yeah, you have to. You have to, and I mean, coming back to conventions and, uh, well, certainly horror cons, especially, you know, it's nice to be able to do that and to be able to buy a product, a, a DVD or, or a T-shirt or whatever mm -hmm. of, of um, an indie film. It's a fantastic thing to do, and I think it's only right that we should do that, you know, because it's not just essentially about the big boys, certainly, you know, the old ethos <coughs> behind making horror films is making often making something out of nothing isn't it you know yeah yeah you're right you're absolutely right and i think as much as we all love the the bigger budgeted films as well you know there's a there's a, a lot of cracking really low budget horror films out there um and i think if we don't support that on a universal basis you know a lot of these people these filmmakers are, are just gonna go mm -hmm. gonna get dragged down by the nine, nine to five jobs um, and kind of leave leave the industry, and for me, that's sad, you know. Leave doing things like that because it's important. <clears throat> it's important. Yeah, it is. It really is. But um, it's I guess it's one of those things. It's tough too. Just it's it's a thing where if you're doing something like I mean, make even making music, any type of art you do, making music, doing podcasts doing films you gotta you gotta have a thick skin as far as because you're always gonna have you're gonna have those people who love what you do and then you're gonna have people who hate what you do because and i mean by what i mean by hate what you do is like they might like they might not like what you're putting out 
and they might be really like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're being really honest about it. It's not like someone who's just, you know, just saying it just to say it. You know, there's people who are just like, hey, I, it's not for me, which is fine. And then you're going to have those, which are the wor- which are the ones that sucks. Is You're going to have the people who say that it sucks or say they hate it out of jealousy because they didn't do it first or because they didn't do it or they can't do it or they think they can't do it. So it's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm just going to use you for an example. I'm not watching any of Dave's stuff. Or I'm, you know, I, I can't stand Dave's stuff. He's not good at what he does knowing in the back of my mind that they, they really do enjoy it, that you're really good at it, but because they can't do it, you know, they're going to be, oh, this is terrible, this is bad. And it's like, no, just keep it to your – I'm the type of person, like, if, if I'm going to review a movie, for example, which I do plenty of movie reviews, I will be 100% honest about it if I like it or not. I do try to find the positives from a movie, even if I, even if I have to make it funny. But I'll never, like um, – I'll never say I don't like a movie just because – somebody made it and I can't make it like that's that's dumb that doesn't make sense <laughs> same thing with like a podcast I mean oh I'm not gonna no I'm not gonna like I I can't do it you won't say you can't do it you'll say you don't like it because it's corny it's garbage, whatever but I I can't you know what I mean I can't say that because it's it's not fair it's like you just because you can't do it or just because you didn't try to do it doesn't mean it's not a good film or a good project or a good product just if you can't do it you can't do it try it maybe that's not for you you just have to find you know what's for you what kind of creativity you can do for yourself and go from there that's why i'm a i'm a pod i'm a podcaster and i love what i do like i enjoy doing these podcasts i'm not a filmmaker i know that and i'm fine with that what i love to what i want do i want to be in a film i'm gonna try one of these days maybe i'm gonna try to be in an indie film one of these days maybe if something local happens it'd be it'd be fun i will say that or if there's some quarantine type of thing where people are doing it from their own homes like sitting here i'll try that just because and i'm no actor none of that but it'd be fun to try it'd be fun to do it'd be funny <laughs> well, it's a, as you say, it's all about getting involved, though, isn't it? It doesn't matter, you know, if you're not not good at anything, or or if you don't feel you're good at any at a specific element. Yeah, you know, I think it's all. Once again, it's about getting involved and and um, kind of showing showing your support and showing your your commitment to something that you love. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. I mean, any art's subjective, isn't it? You know, and you're going to get your lovers and your haters, as you say. Oh, but as, long, as you say, as long as it's for the right reasons, you know, nobody's going to care less, really. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all, we're all individuals as people, and some things you're going to like and some things you're not going to like. I Which, I, I think that's fine, though. Like, I don't... Nobody likes everything, and I think it's healthy not to like everything. I think it's it's when... You're um like I said, it's it's when you're jealous of a person. Like when somebody's jealous that you're doing something and that you're good at something. Mm-hmm. No matter how successful you are, you could just be popular because you're going viral on the internet. That's not really bringing you in money, and people could be mm-hmm. jealous of that and just oh well, this is corny, this sucks, this is stupid. At the same time, they're trying to do the same thing you're doing. They're just not getting. Sometimes it's just who you know as well. Okay. You might be better than me at this, but I know you know I know these few people that'll share this more for me. For example. But I mean, either way, I like I said, with with what I do, I enjoy it. I know my show is not for everybody, which I'm fine with. I know I'm sure there's people out here that have heard my show and say, you know, the show's not that good. Fine, that's not gonna bother me either way. It's not gonna hurt my feelings either way. I don't care. But again, going back to when it comes to bashing somebody just because or bashing their work just because, that's when it's messed up. If you're doing it out of an art form or it's like, you know. Hey, I don't like this. Here's why I don't like this. Cool. Oh, be my guest. Go ahead. As you say, you know, we're all different people. And um, as long as we can unite as one, or as much as we can, then that's all we can do as a community, isn't it? Yeah. You know? That's what we need to be doing. No matter what no matter what it is, it's horror, whatever. The case, all across the board, we do need to unite as one thing, because we're all people. That's... Just different shades, different colors, different accents, look a little different, but we're all we all bleed red. <laughs> you're right, you're right. In buckets of it sometimes, huh? <laughs> a lot of buckets of it. If you watch some of the movies we've seen, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Are, so, are, you, are you um aware of a, a film it's an American film called Chicago Rot? Chicago Rot? Yeah. Chicago I haven't seen that. Rot. No, check it out if you um I've seen it at a festival in Germany. Um Actually, it was. I went over to Germany for the. It was the premiere of Girl, my short film, Girl in a Scar. 
at mm -hmm. our film festival in Germany. And this feature called Chicago Rock was screening there too. And it was bloody fantastic. It was, you know, one of them films what I'd never heard of. And a lot of people I speak to have never heard of it. But it's such a fantastic film. Um, I mean, it has, it has everything. It's got, uh, you know, drama. It's got gore. It's got sci-fi. You know, it's such an amazing film. So if you get a chance, check it out, Aaron. It's, it's, it's a really I definitely movie. will. I'm looking it up online right now, actually. And it's cute. Chicago Rot. Yep. Yeah. I found it on this. Now, I don't know if you guys have this in the UK, because I don't know how the differences are with the internet and all that stuff goes and the laws. But there's an app I use. It's called Tubi. T U B I. Oh yes, I've heard of it. I've heard of it. It's. I just look. I just. Look, I googled Chicago Rot and it's on Tubi for free. So I just put it in my queue to watch. All right, cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I'll check it out. <clears throat> yeah, oh, Tubi. Tubi's a. Oh my gosh. Speaking of how I was telling you about how I can go back and watch like older '80s films and just a bunch of horror films I've never seen. Tubi has so many freaking films on there, and again, it's it's a free app, hundred percent free. If you want to save things in your queue, all you have to do is sign up with your email. And that way, when you, you know, sign up with the email, sign in, and you can just have things saved. You don't have to do that, but it's, I love that freaking app. Like, I watch, I can't tell you how many movies I've watched on that app just because, you know, you look it up and like, okay, boom, free right here. The only thing with it is, excuse me, and which isn't even a bad thing. It has like two minute commercials in it here, two minute ads here and there. But again, it's free. That's what pays for it. So, yeah. You can't be mad at that. A bit like the um, <clears throat> free free version of Spotify on a music level. Yeah. Well, that's yep. the advert in, in, in between every few songs. Yep. Same but similar to that. I need to do the advertising in order to be able to give it away for free. Some of it anyway. Yeah. Which is, it's cool though. I love it. It's a great app and highly, highly, highly recommended. So Chicago Rock, I'm definitely going to check that movie out. Nice one. Nice one. I appreciate that recommendation, actually. I wish I had one for you that I can think of, but I, I can't even think of a recommendation. Well, I'm sure you'll think of loads after we finish talking. That's, how it, that's how it always happens. So, so what's your favorite um, 80s films, 80s horrors, then? 80s horror films? Um, Like I said, the Friday the 13th franchise is my favorite slasher franchise. That's my favorite slasher. Like, Jason's my favorite slasher. As far as... Oh, that's tough. I'm, I mean, I could take the easy way out and say the big three jason michael freddy but um i'm actually gonna throw a movie in that i just seen recently that i think is it's like moving up in my list of like one of my favorite films it's called intruder actually that's yeah, was that wasn't that um is, it, is that somehow connected to uh the guys who made evil dead is, is it... no no not at all this one is um i know uh what's his name is in it oh, what is his name with the chin Bruce Campbell. He's in. He's in the movie as a police officer, but he's. It's, it has nothing to do with Evil Dead. No, but it's, sure. Intruder is a movie. It's a horror slasher movie, and it's. It all takes place in a grocery store. Mm. And it was. It was just. It was so freaking cool. So awesome. It was such a good time. And I, I like those kind of movies, like those kind of campy movies where it's just like one spot, simple done, simply done, you know, the 80s cheesiness in it. Yeah. And it was the first time I've seen a horror movie that was just based in, a, not just based in one location. I've seen that plenty of times, but based in a grocery store. Right. Great movie. And it's actually, that's actually another movie that's on Tubi that I, I highly, highly recommend. Yeah, I'll check it out. I have seen the trailer for it. That's what, that's what makes me think that it was something to do with the uh, Evil Dead. Evil Dead. Oh. I don't know how the, what the connection is exactly, but I'm sure there's some connection. Um, maybe the producer or something. Could be, could be. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I know Bruce Campbell's in it. He plays a police. Yeah. He doesn't even have like a, a lead role, and he's here. In, he's like in the beginning, I believe, at the end. Yeah, yeah. I think one of my favorite '80s cheesy horror movies has to be Brian Usner's um, Society. Society, you said. Society, yeah. Have you seen that? I haven't. That's another one I gotta check. Oh, it's fantastic, out. fantastic. It's, uh, I mean, it was quite a big, um, a big movie, yeah, as far as I'm aware. In the eighties, it's kind of like a body, body horror kind of melt movie almost. Um, I'm sure you'll look. Given what you've said about the, you know, eighties cheese, what you love, I'm sure you'll love this movie. <clears throat> oh, 
it's on Tubi, so I will be checking that one. I'll check that yeah, one out as well. Yeah, fantastic film. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's just something about that 80s cheese. It's just, you can never get enough of it. You can never freaking get enough of it. And the funny thing is, again, going back to it, they're similar in a sense of, obviously, the way they dress, the way they talk, the music they're listening to. And I think that's one funny thing about horror movies is, like, <clears throat> with the 80s, with the 80s slashers, I'll say more so, is the music they play in it, it's like you're having a good time. You know, it's like that good time, fun music, and it's not always because of a party scene. And somebody's getting ready to die. <laughs> or, like, Friday the 13th, when some of those films go off, the music, you know, the music when the movie's going off is like a fun, fun music that makes you want to get up and dance or something. But like this whole movie was about people getting killed through the whole damn movie, and it ends like an '80s like action movie song or like an '80s, you know, one of those '80s not a horror movie, but one of those other genres of the '80s movies right. type of music. That's what I was saying how they were connecting earlier in, in the show. But yeah, society, I'm definitely have to give that one a look. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm sure you love it. It's very cheesy and uh, fantastic effects, you know. Um, no, you you like it, I'm sure, hundred percent. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna check it out. Society. <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to think. Oh, this this stuff behind me. You want to talk about this before we end the show? Yeah, um, I can do. Um, is any way you particularly like me to start, or and any any way you want to? So okay, so the one down there. The red kind of filtered one was a was Over a here. film at the bottom, yeah. Over yeah, <laughs> I'm still getting used to this whole. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. That, that was a, a, it was kind of an art house um, film called um, Libus Machine uh -huh. um, or Love Machine in in English, and it was about a it was about a guy who has an affair with a video recorder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, and it's about man's man's. Um, connection to technology and um that was a low that was a no budget thing something we shot in literally one day okay know, one location um not i wouldn't say it's particular particularly horror but it was just something i'd always wanted to kind of explore the connection between you know the human race and technology on a lower level and kind of that was my uh, my entree of doing that, I suppose you could call it. Mm -hmm. um, the one with the the one the picture above that is from probably my most successful short film called Dystopia Street, which you've seen, haven't you? This one right here. Oh, this one. That one, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, that was. Um, that was a funded a funded short film which mm -hmm. I made in 2011 I believe 2011 yeah it was made through a, a, a UK scheme called Stingers mm -hmm. um, run by the UK Film Council at the time and the local area office called um, Northern Film and Media um, that film actually it was a, it was an odd one the way that one came about because for years before I'd been keeping a, a kind of dream diary. Yeah. Of everything I'd kind of dreamt what affected me, um, or which I remembered when I woke up nightmares, dreams. I'd, I'd jotted down in a book, um, and I suppose it was a, this probably went on for about two years, mm -hmm. and um, from it, I I kind of. Um, made the screenplay for Dystopia Street. So I, it was just a collection of images, really, which had affected me while, while I was uh, uh, nightmares or dreams, things I'd remembered when I'd woke up. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of took these images and kind of um, built them into some kind of story thread. Um, oh, nice. Obviously, in itself, it was quite disjointed, but I worked with a, a script editor from Northern Film and Media at the time, and we kind of worked through and added this link in about this guy who's kind of lost, wakes up lost in this place. He doesn't know where he is. Um, and, and I suppose it, it was about um, 
being somewhere and not being not being able, not knowing where you are, but not, not also not knowing how to escape oh. from this place where you are, and mm. also him coming up against his facing his fears, I suppose, um, everything inside of him, which which scared him. Um, I mean, as you've seen, it's quite surreal and quite experimental in, in ways. And it, it's kind of something I like to explore within the, the films I make. Um, not particularly for any reason, to be honest. I suppose yeah. it, it links back to to the films I enjoy, the likes of David Lynch films, where the film actually goes under the human skin and in into the kind of mechanics of what it is to be human on a mental level yeah yeah that's what i like to try and explore within my films um and i suppose you could say a similar thing about girl in the scarf although there's a mu much more kind of on eric quality about it um a girl in the scar was something what we did which was shot in 2013 but it took us four years to complete because because of the animation and the, some of the small visual effects, what was in it, and mm -hmm. um, we didn't have the budget to to get it finished. So um, the guy who was supposed to be editing it originally had to drop out because of his workload. He was a he had his own company, his own post production company, um, and he had to drop out from editing my movie because he was doing it for free, and he had too much work. Okay. Did work, so he couldn't do it. So it took us four years to complete because we had to um, find basically people that would work for a lot less, a lot less cash to be able to finish it. But again, Girl in the Scar was something which another kind of strange story, I suppose, where that one came from. I was in in the UK. There's a there's a, um, a chain of of shops which sell pasties and sausage rolls called Greg's. Um, I was in there one one day just waiting, bought a sandwich or something for my lunch. And there was a girl in at the front of the in the front of the queue who was just paying for whatever it was she'd bought. And as she went over to, to pass the money over, the kind of um, the sleeve on her her um, top and I pulled back and I noticed all these self and self arming marks on her arm and it kind of really intrigued me you know because it sounds awful to say but it looked really artistic in a funny kind of way you know I mean she was a very kind of beautiful goth girl mm -hmm. and this kind of these kind of self inflicting scars on her arm kind of added to this you know this all over palette of, of something really unusual and when i left i thought god that you know that's really strange it's really strange to imagine the the, the kind of um the damage she must be going through you know she must have inflicted upon herself and why you know the kind of life she had to mm -hmm. to do that to herself and i suppose that was the idea from that the made me start thinking about writing a screenplay about about a, a girl who self-harmed that's where um girl in the scar came from um but it, within it i wanted to kind of try and make it so an audience or a viewer is kind of following that journey with the protagonist within the film you know so make it not so much a story what's been told to them but something that they're living as well using image yeah you know that that was the idea with that. Um, so basically, them them two films are the last two short films I made. And as I said, the story was done in 2011. Do you have anything in store now, or like anything brewing now? Yeah, um, no more short films. Girl in the Scar was my tenth, I think, short film I've made. Okay. That since I've been making films. In January, I shot a trailer for my first feature called uh, The Invoked, which is kind of a psychological horror about a young guy who meets this girl online and um, through it, he gets involved in this witchcraft cult. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so uh, I'm developing that with a production company based in Derby. Um, but we shot the, the tra a trailer for it, kind of a teaser trailer for it in January, um, which is still in post-production at the minute. And we're hoping to use that to try and um, raise some funds to try to shoot a feature. Oh, nice. That'd be awesome. So that, that's the idea. And that, that's pretty much where I'm at at the minute. Um, obviously, with this lockdown, things have slowed down a bit. As, oh, yeah. As they have for everybody, certainly in the arts industries. Um, but hopefully, things will pick up once you know things start opening up again and we're able to get back out, out there. Mm -hmm. So we may may well do a crowdfunder for it once this trailer's finished. We'll get it online and see if we can gauge any interest. But we have had we have got um, one actress um, uh, attached to the project um, who you may have heard of. She's a, a genre actress called Lynn Lowry, American. I'm not sure. She was in. Um, she's most famous. She was in. Rem George Romero's Crazies and um, Cronenberg's um, Shivers. Okay, <clears throat> I'm yeah. see with me. I'm I'm horrible with actors and actresses' names, right. but uh, I'm sure I've seen her in some something before. But I'm just terrible with names. Yeah, she's she's done quite a bit of more low low budget stuff as she's got a bit older as well. Um, but I've not I've, I've not seen that much of, of the most yeah. recent stuff. No, that's cool though. Yeah, so hopefully, as I say, hopefully we'll be able to raise some kind of budget to be able to shoot it. I mean, but it is pretty much it's only kind of two locations. Yeah. Three main characters. Um, so fingers crossed, fingers crossed uh, we'll, we'll be doing that in the next two couple of years. Hopefully if we can raise some kind of budget. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. That's the plan anyway. That's hey, you gotta have a plan though. That's where it all starts, right? <laughs> of course, Dan. And how do you um have you have you got any further thoughts on developing your podcast in any way? Um <clears throat> like okay, so when I first again going back to when I first started this, it was audio only. And like when I put it out, it would go out and say like, well it, the home thing that it goes on, it's called um Podbean and from there it shares off into other platforms, you know, like Spotify, iTunes, all that kind <laughs> of stuff. Hmm. And just recently, I'll say, around when this quarantine stuff started, maybe a little bit sooner, I've started using this Zoom thing, started doing the green screen thing, learned it more and more and got better with it. And now what I'm going to be doing is doing, um, still putting out my audio of this, like of this episode, for example, but also putting out the video version of it on YouTube. So that's like, that's one thing I've done, well, that I've changed over the past couple of years. And then... I just want to learn more with the video editing as far as like editing an episode, making an intro for an episode and making an, making like, you know, like a quick 30 second, 20 second intro, introducing the episode, but something, and then it goes into the episode and just using little effects here and there. I just, I'm just do I do like with each episode, what I do is I do a little bit here and there with an effect or something small as I learn and just keep growing more and more. But you know, nothing too, too crazy, I guess not yet. And I'm going to have merch soon as far as, like, this hat I'm wearing. I'm going to have more of these to sell, Horror Research 30 hats. And just kind of just kind of enjoy. I, honestly, I'm just going to keep trying to enjoy the process. Not try to. I'm going to keep enjoying the process, keep having fun doing these interviews, doing these movie reviews with people. Um, I also do, like, random horror videos. Like, I'll have, like, for example, I'll do, like, an unboxing video. I have my background, all that stuff through here, and just make it fun. Do You know, do give, starting to do giveaways. And just stuff like that, just to, you know, get more content out there, get more eyes and ears on, you know, what I do and get more content out and just meet more horror fans and have more and more fun with this stuff. Cause it's such, it's such a fun, rewarding thing at the end of the day. And the cool thing about it is it's like, I'm starting to realize more and more. I've been told by a few people, but I'm starting to realize more and more over these past couple of years, especially now that uh, <clears throat> doing this, show is like a good getaway for people as far as either having a guest on here it's a getaway from the real world for however long we're talking say an hour hour and a half and then people that listen to, and then the others that listen to the episodes it's a getaway from them you know for however however many episodes they listen to 
at the time, you know, at the time of day, if you listen to an hour, two hour episode, or whatever the case may be, it's that good getaway. You get some good laughs in. You forget about everything. It's also, again, before it's a quarantine thing, listening to it at work. If you're allowed to listen to a podcast at work, you get to enjoy that. It helps the day go by so much freaking faster. When you just, like for me, for my job, well, whenever I go back, I work for the state and it's pretty much data entry on the computer all day. So I can listen to music or I can listen to podcast, whatever the case. And it just, it helps so much to just listen to something. Like I'll listen to my podcast and that might sound narcissistic, I guess, but I just listen to it because I look at it like I put out so many episodes, right? And when I finally, when I, when I record an episode, like, for example, I've probably done almost 40 episodes since this quarantine thing. They're not all out yet, but when I go back and, because I go, we know later on, I'll go back and listen to my episodes. You forget the conversations you have and you forget how much fun you, I have fun on every single episode, but you forget the funny stuff in that episode. And then you, you, when you're listening to it, you're just laughing like, oh, wow, we really said that. Or, oh, you know, this was a good conversation. Or if I'm listening to another podcast or another horror podcast, for example, which I listen to all different genres of podcasts, but I'll get ideas as far as not stealing their ideas, but as far as like a movie to review or a movie to check out. And even going back and listening to my own episodes, like sometimes I'll forget or I won't write it down or I won't save it as far as like something, hey, you should check this movie. I'll go back and listen to that episode. I'm like, oh, shit, I got to check. You know, they told me I should check this movie out three months ago. I need to, I need to go check this movie out. <laughs> But it's just it's just one of those things, and I mean, I can say I listen to my listen to it too to get better at what I do, but I honestly just listen to it just to enjoy the episode. I, like I don't listen to it to try to get better because I feel, I feel I just get better as far as with anything. I'm sure you're the same way with your filmmaking. You you just get better at it the more you do it. Then you learn new things. You learn new, yeah. you learn new ways to do it. You learn easier ways to do it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you make sure you're still having fun doing it. And that's one thing I love. Like I said, with this podcast, I love what I do. I enjoy it. Do I wish this could be my nine to five? Of course. Hell, I would love that. Nothing more as far as work wise. Will I keep doing it if it never becomes that? Of course. I've done over 100 episodes. And I'm going to keep doing <laughs> a ton more. And it's cool. Like, it's rewarding and it feels good when couple things one i'll say when people refer others to come on my show like hey you know you should check out you should go on his show i had a good time on there that feels great and then there's those there's the ones where people are just like hey this is you know it's cool listening to your show it's a good getaway like i was just saying or it's cool coming on your show it's a good getaway and then when you get the random emails of hey i heard your show i would love to come on like i love that i just i love all that kind of interaction where it's like because i you it's like it's making a difference in a sense. I know it's just – it's people can say it's just talking about horror, but at the same time, like I said, it gives you that getaway. And it kind of – it's making a difference as far as, like, it's putting a smile on somebody's face. It's making people laugh, which I think is just an awesome, awesome thing because you don't think of that. I just think of it as just having a good time recording with – again, start out with friends and family to recording with just awesome random people. And that's pretty much it. Like, I don't <laughs> – I don't know. It's, it's so rewarding. And it's like, for me – I can see where you're coming from. I mean, it's the same thing as as, as as making something, isn't it? Really, you know, you're connecting with people, yeah. And you're discussing you're discussing things that each of you love. So, you know, you can't go wrong with it, really. And it's a fantastic way of connecting with with people around the world as well. You know, within within your mm -hmm. own kind of love, the the community of, of horror, really. It's it's, it's fantastic. This this is definitely one of those things, though, as you were saying earlier, with excuse me, especially with independent filmmaking, it's definitely like a passion thing because, again, you're not getting paid to do it. So it's not like one of those things where I'm doing it to try to make money. Again, mm -hmm. if I made money off it, fantastic. If I don't, fantastic. I'm still going to do it. So it's, it's like that passion thing. You really, really enjoy doing it. You just have a great time doing it. You have fun doing it. And you can tell by, like, the energy of people who do, who have shows or who do films, you can tell by their energy, why they're doing it. If they really enjoy it. And it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I really, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's kind of tough to put it into so many words without repeating yourself over and over and over. Just look, I really love what I'm doing. It's fun. I'm meeting new people and meeting so many new horror fans. And I get to see, it opens my eyes up to new movies. I get to talk to special, you know, people that do special effects, which I think is, freaking amazing we all as a horror fan we all love the special effects the practical yeah. effects yeah. i get to talk to filmmakers and then just other horror fans like it's and you get 
you get different. No, I'm trying to think. You get different ideas from people to help your show, to help your projects. And then you get different, um, you get, I guess, easy way to say it, you get different opinions on certain horror movies or why they like this movie or they don't like this movie versus why you like this movie and why you don't like this movie. Like you get it from, it's cool getting it from like somebody who does special effects, somebody who does, you know, who somebody in the film industry, whether it be, you know, Hollywood or independent and then getting it just from other fans. It's it's just cool because you again you get different perspectives, but you get to get you know what I mean you wear a different lens than me because you do movies. I, you, we both we're both a fan of watching it, but you do movies, so you'll. I'm guessing you'll watch the film a little bit different than I will. You'll judge a film a little bit different than I will because you know what went into it, and you're just like as far as like say a camera angle, the lighting, whatever the case may be, you understand that a whole lot more. So like, okay, you could for you could say like say it's a movie we both don't like. You can say well you know what. I didn't like it because of this, this, this. And if they would have just turned the lighting, you know, if they would have just had the lighting a little different, had the lights, you know, turned a little different, that would have just made a big difference. Versus me, I'm just watching as far as like just the movie in general. I'm not even thinking about it as far as like, a, you know, a filmmaker's perspective, lighting and all that other great stuff. So I, I, I just love that. I think it's an awesome thing. Yeah. Well, they always say that's a sign of a good movie, a movie what, which doesn't kind of bring you out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, which is... Uh, I suppose in a way it's kind of a disadvantage being a filmmaker because like you say often you do look at often not on first viewings maybe second viewings or third viewings you're kind of looking at the performances and you know the way they're shooting something mm. um, which is both good and bad in a way but I suppose it's it's why sometimes you watch a film more than once because you want to get something different out of it you know and yeah. going back to what we were saying within the horror genre horror genre you know you can you can get lots out of a lot of movies within the genre for various different reasons very um, true but no no it's, uh, it's I think I think what you're doing is fantastic uh, Aaron it's yeah. a fantastic thing what you're doing mate and keep it up keep up the good work you know thank you so much and you keep doing what you're doing and just keep the love for it that's I think that's the biggest thing it's one of those things where like once you lose that passion for it it's never going to be the same. It's never, you're just, if you can keep your passion for it, even if there's times where you got to like, Hey, I need to take a break. I need to take a month off. I need to take a week off and just not do it. It's good. It's good too. I don't, some people think you have to keep going, 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 but sometimes it, you know, because it's your passion, but sometimes you got to give that passion a little break so you can kind of refresh, reset and get back into it with just fresh, with a fresh mind. Of course you do, yeah. I mean, life has funny ways of kind of pushing you down sometimes, but I think you'll always come back. Oh, yeah. Come back, come back to what you love, won't you? You know, all the time, you know. It's never a straight road to what we weave as human beings, but we always get there in the end, I think, eventually. Um, we always find our passion in what we love. And, and, and that's important. That's important. And, you know, if a group of people who you know, love the same kind of things, can get together and discuss them and, and laugh about them and talk about them, then that's just fantastic. Yes, yes, you're so right. You're so right. Excuse me. Now, um, I guess we can kind of get wrap it up, but is there anything you want to plug or is there anything you want to put out there for the people to know where they can find you? Um, I suppose just fa Facebook's the easiest place to find me. Um, I haven't got a lot of my work out there, to be honest. Um, not, okay. A couple of my films are available through Angerman Distribution, um, which is an online VOD streaming site. Um, and I've, I've had a couple of my short films put on a, a, a various short film anthologies, which have been released on Blu-ray and DVD nice. in the past. But at the minute, um, as I say, Angerman Distribution, Mm -hmm. um, I've got uh, probably about six of my shorts on if anybody wants to check any of them out um, not Girl on a Scar though because that's still um, we've still got some more festival screenings for that coming up so that's not been released yet but it will be later in the year um, and I suppose just to keep an eye out for, for the feature I'm hopefully going to be doing um, in the next few years which as I say we'll probably end up doing a crowdfunder for it Awesome. Um, 
but that's about it really you know i think we all just need to get over on top of this whole pandemic yeah and kind of come into it with a, a positive light and energy to start again and whip ourselves up to get being creative once more don't we i agree i agree and like i said this is this is the time people to where you should all them creative juices should be flowing you should be working on either a passion project obviously this is stuff you can do it from your own home or whatever the case may be but work on it practice if you if you're someone who wants to write movies practice writing a script right now you have if you're i mean again if you're stuck at home if you're someone who wants to shoot movies practice on your phone there's plenty of things you can do if you want to start a podcast you could even start that on your phone if you really wanted to just get it and I, the, the thing i say to, another thing i want to say too is do it and put it out there for the people to see like if you're going to do a podcast i don't care if it's a 10 minute episode 20 minute episode two hour episode it's your first put it out there on youtube for people to see same thing with the film with the short films 15 minute film you only spent 10 bucks on whatever you have because that way, not yes, people will be maybe critical about it. People might bash it, but at the same time, you're putting it out there for yourself to see how much you've grown. Like that's like I've had some episodes to where, as far as my green screen thing, right? I have an editing program where, you know, I can use I can do it to put the green screen in there. This is before I knew Zoom could do this whole virtual background like this, mm -hmm. and I'd, I'd plug it in later, like as I'm editing, and it didn't look half as good as this. But I still put the obviously I'm still gonna put the episode out. And I just see how much better I've gotten with it and just see how much I've learned from it from, you know, day one to day whatever this may be as far as, you know, with the green screen, just for example. And it's just one of those things. I feel you put it out there. It could be great. It could be bad. You might be – you might not even be happy with it. Like, you might be – like, for me, I'm happy with every single episode I've done. I might not have liked the green screen. I might not have loved the green screen thing because I was just learning but I still put it out there because it, it helps me. Cause I'm like, okay, I can look at all my YouTube videos and say, okay, well here you could tell I started, this is where I first started. Not just um, ignore the dates of when they came out. This is where I first started. And this is where I am today. And you can see how much I've grown just within a few weeks. And it's just like, that's to me, it's amazing. And I feel everybody can do something as far as their crafts and their passions. It's like, just, it's not where you start. It's where you end up finishing. And I'm not even like, to me, as far as this goes, I'm still in the beginning. Like, this is only going to get better. And I feel with everybody, you should feel that way about what you're doing, what you're passionate about. No matter how good you are at it right now, look at it as still the beginning, and you're always going to get better at it as long as you just keep that passion for it and keep trying. Of course, yeah. No, you're completely right. You know, I think a lot, I think a lot of people kind of let that, that fear of, of kind of failure stop them from doing anything. Agreed. Because and the only way you're going to learn and take that road is by going out there doing what your passion is. I agree. Making them mistakes and learning from them and pushing it on, you know? I agree. And another thing, well, not, one other thing I want to say is I think as people, not as, I'm not saying everybody, but as people, we spend too much time, time trying to outdo each other as far as people who have this, like, po other podcasters try to outdo other podcasters. Filmmakers try to outdo other film Instead of just trying to do what the best you can do or trying to outdo yourself from what you've done last. Try to outdo yourself. Don't try to outdo others because you're, there's all everything, everything that you're into, everything that you do, there's going to be somebody that's always one step ahead because maybe they've been doing it longer or maybe they just catch on a little bit faster. Yeah. So just try to get better for yourself. Try to get, try to outdo yourself for things you do in life in general. Stop trying to outdo everybody else. Try to outdo yourself and you'll be fine. You'll probably be a hell of a lot happier too. Of course, of course, of course. No, I, I completely agree with you, you know. But, you know, you can trace that whole thing back to, you look at these reality TV shows on TV <laughs> these days, and, you know, a lot of that is kind of pressure put on younger people who are, who are watching from the home and thinking, oh, I, I should be like that. And it's all yeah. bollocks, really, isn't it? You know, there's only one person you need to be, and that's yourself. And, exactly. and whatever, whatever way you, you look at life or whatever you love to do, you know, you're completely right. I think that's why so many people, I don't know, I think that's, it, it's a difficult thing, isn't it? It's a difficult thing. But I think there's a lot of pressure placed on younger people to be this or to be that, when actually they don't have to be anything, you know, they just have to be themselves and yeah. try and follow a path which is true to them in whatever they may want to do in life, you know? Yeah, um, and with what it is with that too, I guess, I mean, Maybe we all go through it a little bit when you're younger, 
to an extent, maybe more so now, because again, it's all over the place with social media and everything, especially with social media. But you do have to find like you have to find your own path. You do have to find your own path. And some people don't find it till they're in their twenties or thirties. Some people find it when they're 17, 18, 19 years old. You just have to once you find it, you'll know once you find it, you'll know it's like that path I guess you're supposed to take or the path that's right for you. Even if you don't know at first, even if you don't feel like it's the right path at first, but you'll just, once you're on there and you go through a couple, you'll be like, okay, you know, this is for me. Of course. And I, think. And, and I think in life, nothing's simple, is it? Nothing's simple, nothing's easy and nothing. straightforward. You know, you have, you have to fight to, to, yeah. kind of, to get to where you want to be in life. That's part of learning, part of developing as people. You know? I'll say nothing worth having in life or nothing, you know what I mean? Is it's, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. Whether it's, Hey, I want to do this, but I can't afford it. That's, that can be tough. Hey, I want to do this, but whatever the case may be, you want to do something, but you can't for whatever the case may be, you'll figure out a way to do it. And then once you earn it and do it on your own, you'll be like, well, even if you do it with help, once you earn it and do it, Hey, that was worth it. That was awesome. Now I know I can do this and I can do a hell of a lot more because I did this one thing. I did this, these few things. Yeah. but yeah man i guess we can end it on that note it's cool that's one okay here's one last thing i'm gonna say that's that's one other thing i love about this podcast is i know it's a horror podcast but i feel like here and there was episodes as we just go off on a tangent with the random conversation we were just having which was a great one gem like yes people get a lot people will laugh from these episodes all that good stuff but then you get those gems of like like those life gems you could take from it like if anything else you get from the podcast, I'm hoping people at least take, besides the laughs and the smiles and the entertainment, I do hope they take those life gems I do have here and there with conversations with people like yourself and other awesome people of just, you know, just enjoy life, I guess. That's that's the best thing I can say is enjoy life. Be as great as you can be. Be better than you were yesterday. That's, that's, all, that's all we as people can do, isn't it, really? You know, yeah. It's not easy for a lot of people around the world at the minute. Not at all. Everybody's in... And I'm not just even talking about the, the, the coronavirus, you know. I'm talking about you know, a lot of countries, you know, a lot of people are in pain all around the world for one reason or another. Yeah. Um, so the least we can do is, is, is kind of try and be there in whatever form we are mm -hmm. for people to take something from and make their lives that, that little bit better, I suppose, exactly. in any way. Exactly. And I think that's why what you're doing to in order to get people around the world who love horror in this case together is a fantastic thing. So well done you. Well done. Thank you. you. Appreciate that. Not, not a problem. Not a problem. Appreciate and, uh, that. hopefully uh, um I'll um, be able to watch some more of your pod podcasts in the near future. Have you got any more arranged with anybody, any other filmmakers or filmmakers? Um actually I do I think I have one tomorrow. And then just other fans. But yeah, I just, again, I just try to get them out as soon as, I mean, as far as like, I have, I have episodes out now, which I'll send you the YouTube link. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just, again, I try to record as much as possible since, uh, you know, I'm, I'm home all the time. And I just, again, it's, it's so much fun. I don't even look at it. I mean, I know it's not work, but even if it was a job or work, if that's what you want to call it, if I was making, say again, work as far as, I mean, financially. I wouldn't even look at it as work. I just look at it as, hey, I, I would be one of those people that, you know, you know how there's those people who they're in their careers and they love their career and they wake up with like a big smile on their face, like I'm getting ready to go to work. That's how I'll do it with this. I just, like, hey, you just have to go upstairs to the attic. What do you, like, hey, that's fine. I'm getting ready to go to work. I'm happy about, even if I had to travel, like say if I had to travel to a studio to do this, yeah. I would still do it. I would still do it and I would still enjoy it. I But again, Another awesome thing I love about this is I can do it right from my own home. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to do anything. I just have to get up, wash up, get dressed, set up the screen, and Bob, your do, uncle. <laughs> yep. do what I got to do. Fantastic, man. Fantastic. I want to thank you so much for coming on. I had a great time. A this pleasure. this was too. fun. We definitely got to do this again down the road and yeah. possibly review a movie together, too. That would be, that'd be real fun. Yeah, yeah, I'd be up for that. That'd be cool, man. That'd be cool. Uh, no, seriously. As, as I say, try and get to watch them Chicago, Chicago Rot and... Um, society? Uh, society, yeah. We'll do, we'll do. You, you love society. I mean, Chicago Rot's a bit a bit more serious, but it's, it's 
just a fantastic film in the sense that it, you can't really put it in a box, you know, it's got so yeah. much in there. It, it kind of turns from one film into another. Well, that's what I loved about it, you know. You awesome. kind of in there mentally thinking it's this what kind of film and then it just yeah. flips and it turns into something else, which was for no, me I'm, amazing. I'm definitely gonna check it out. I'm definitely gonna check that movie out. Nice one, man. Nice one. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. It's uh, night, really nice to speak to you. And you uh, take care of yourself. You as well. And again, you have. I'll send you. Well, once we're done recording, I'll send you the link for my uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, I should have done a long time ago, but hey, better late than never, right? <laughs> of course, of course. Man. But um, again, seriously, thank you so much for coming on. Best of luck with all your projects. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll definitely talk to you soon. Okay, don't man. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day, man. Yes, and you. Take it easy, man. Have a good one. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye now. Yep. And to all my listeners, as you know, first of all, definitely go check out Dave's stuff. I'll get some links, but um you should know where to find me by now. YouTube Horror Resource 30. I have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. The group is for anybody and everybody to share anything and everything horror related, including your own projects, horror resource 30. The Facebook group, the Facebook page is more so when I put out my episode and all that other stuff, keep you guys updated. I do post in both with that, but it gets lost in the shuffle in the group. The page, you'll find all that. So please like the page. Please join the group. Post in the group. Have fun in the group. Post funny memes, all that kind of stuff. Be interactive in the group as well and um let's see i have a twitch horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy i have good fun time on there gaming with friends family and all that good stuff talking some junk so again horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy horror research sturdy on facebook horror research sturdy on youtube if you ever want to be on an episode shoot me an email horror with sir dot sturdy again that's horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com and just check out my YouTube channel because I do a lot of random YouTube videos, horror related, of course, unboxings, unpackagings, whatever you want to call it, hauls, search studies hauls, whatever. I'll figure out a better name. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the support. Greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you when 